we are talking about the, di the digital twin of our persona. And we think, and, and we have a right to think, that we own our personality and therefore we should own our personal data as well. Now the reality is different. I'm a computer scientist by education, but also an economist. And I was always fascinated by that intersection between the two. And at the same time, when I was younger, <laughs> I was very much interested in development issues. I didn't come to the OECD right after uh, my university. I went first to the financial sector. <laughs> it was one of the, one of the most boring, well-paid, but still very boring activity I ever had in my life. Data is a kind of a general purpose technology, meaning that you can use data for everything. If you think about healthcare, for instance, where you could use indeed personal uh, health related data to personalize medicine, to, to improve and personalize education and more, have more targeted information that is provided to students. There is a huge demand for people in the economy that are able to manage and process and analyze data. Even the term data scientist has become so appealing that everybody wants to call himself or herself a data scientist. It's not enough to just have those statistical skills in order to be a good data scientist. What you actually also need to have is domain expertise in finance or marketing or wherever. And if you look at salaries that are being paid today, one of the reasons why data scientists earn so much is because there are very few of them still. What it means is that, yes, while the tech industry, and in particular those large firms we were talking about, can afford paying high salaries for data scientists, the problem we see is that, for instance, governments, regulators, small and medium-sized enterprises, in particular in traditional sectors, don't necessarily have that ability to recruit those data scientists because they don't necessarily have the financial resources to do so. It's important to have at least a fair distribution of those skills across the economy, across society. We know, and this is still true, that governments have a difficulties understanding what is happening in this particular area. Our primary role, first role, is raising awareness, informing governments about the potential and risks. The second thing is obviously giving concrete policy recommendation. And so we have a privacy guideline, a council recommendation on privacy protection. It was developed the first time in um, 1980 and revised in 2013. And this was the, back then the first international recognized privacy framework the world had seen. I have specific moments in my day where I would do those routine kind of tasks like checking emails, replying emails, and I'm trying to reserve the time, a significant and well-contained share of my time for creative work, meaning reading, thinking, and really focusing on the key challenge that we need to address. Dedicated moments for what some people call shallow work and have a significant share of my time dedicated to deep work.